Hey everyone, I'm Tom from Sleep Foundation. Today we're taking a look at one of the more popular sleep trackers on the market, the Aura Ring 3.0. Now, Aura just debuted this ring, and so recently we had a chance to sit down and talk with Caroline Kreider, who is Aura's science communication lead. Hi Caroline, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate your time. One of the reasons we love Aura is just how low profile it is. You recommend that we wear it either on our index finger or our middle finger. What is it about those two fingers specifically that give Aura the best data possible? We definitely have people who wear it on every single finger. You know, we have a group of people who wear it on their pinky finger, some people who are on the thumb. But the reason that we recommend that you're wearing it on one of these two fingers is as soon as the Gen 3 ring came out, we're now tracking heart rate during the day and you get much better data based on our you know, internal test when you're on these two fingers. And it mainly has to do with the fact that on the ring, we have these sensor bumps on the bottom and you'd like those sensor bumps to stay in the same location. So you want them to be on the underside of your finger where the signal is clearest and you want them to not be rotating back and forth. So we found those two fingers you get the snuggest fit if you're walking, if you're running, if you're moving around throughout the day. I really, really tried to wear it on one of those two fingers. It, it just didn't work for me. So I chose to wear it on my ring finger. Now, if I wear it here, does it give me any less data or is the, the resolution of the data any less clear? So what, what's happening is, um, you know, everybody's fingers are different. So you might get a really snug fit, particularly on this finger. Um, it just means during the day, you might see more gaps in your data than somebody who is wearing it right here or right here. Let's actually talk about what goes on inside this ring. What are some of the sensors packed into this device? Yeah, great question. Um, don't know if you've gotten up close and personal with magnifying glass with the ring, but these sensor bumps um, are part of our proprietary technology. So if you've ever picked up a wearable before, flipped it over and seen some flashing lights, We've done that same type of technology that's called PPG, but we've developed these sensor bumps that help direct that light directly into your finger on the artery that we want to measure. For Gen 3, we've added two other colors. And so we added green LEDs, which help us do all of the daytime measurements that we expanded into. So daytime heart rate, what's your live heart rate if you're spot checking it, and restorative time. So when is your body relaxing throughout the day? And then we added a red LED, which is going to enable blood oxygen, SpO2, in the ring. So uh, the flashing lights do a lot of different things. They're sort of you know, accomplishing different jobs. We have the green for the day, red for SpO2, and then the infrared, which has been our bread and butter, is what we use at night. So it's a special light frequency, uh, you know, perfectly tuned for nighttime measurements. And then we also have an accelerometer in the ring. So any wearable is going to have something that measures movement and then uh, temperature sensors. Well, let me take a little bit more of a pivot here. Of course, one of the, the things we are most interested in is sleep. So what kinds of data is this tracking as you sleep? We are trying to get as much information as possible so that we can figure out what stage of sleep you're in. So it's using your heart data. So during certain phases of sleep, your heart is beating faster or slower or is changing the way it works with your breath. We're using your respiratory rate data. We're using your temperature, surprisingly, which is um, a metric that a lot of sleep trackers don't have, but your body has distinct temperature patterns. It cools itself down when you're going into sleep. It heats you back up before you wake up. And during certain phases of sleep like REM, your temperature regulation is shut off. So if you've ever woken up sweaty in the middle of the night, you were probably in REM and the covers were too warm. So we're using that temperature and we're using your movement. So we're putting all of that information together to see what phase of sleep you're in. And it's one of those cases where the more clues you have, the more accurate you're going to be at being able to tell what stage of sleep you're in. So one of the other metrics that users receive from the Aura app is a sleep efficiency score. Could be 80%, 90% or, or something worse. How does Aura calculate sleep efficiency? Maybe what, what is that and what is it tracking? So the sleep efficiency metric is all about, we can tell based on your movement and the way that your temperature is once you've gotten into bed. But how much of that eight theoretical hours that you're hopefully lying there, are you actually asleep? And so we're looking at all of your physiological patterns and saying, for every single minute that you were lying in bed, which of those minutes were you actually asleep? Because if your efficiency is really high, 
Maybe you're somebody who is able to get six hours of sleep. You're asleep for all of them drooling on your pillow, and that is good for you. Or maybe you're only lying in bed, you know, for seven and a half, eight hours, and you're sleeping for five of them. So that efficiency metric is meant to be sort of one of the first indicators or warning signs that your time dedicated to being in your bedroom isn't necessarily leading to good sleep. That's a, that's a really helpful distinction. One of the things I'm mindful of is that a large portion of the population struggles with some kind of sleep disorder, whether it's a, a minor one or a, a more major sleep disorder. Falling asleep can be a major struggle and a source of anxiety. A couple questions about that. One, how does the aura know that you've gotten into bed? And then secondly, how does it know that you've fallen asleep? So the most important thing is that aura really personalizes all of its baselines. So again, the first generation of sleep trackers was using these broad population averages to be like, most people have this heart rate when they're awake. They're probably asleep if their heart's this slow. Um, for Aura, it really gets to know your personal baselines. And so it's watching you throughout the day, seeing you know, what your heart looks like when you're awake, alert, and up. And then it's watching you at night. Um, so one of the key patterns that Aura is able to look for that a lot of devices can't is your skin temperature. So we can tell that you're getting in bed and falling asleep because your body naturally cools itself down before you fall asleep. So um, it's measuring your temperature every single minute, which means it can really detect sensitive patterns. So we're looking for which of your physiological metrics are going down. So is your heart rate going down? Is your temperature going down? Is your breathing slowing? What's your you know, HRV doing? And based on that, it can tell that you are headed to sleep. But if you are on your phone naturally, uh, your movement may have quieted down, your skin temperature might be starting to go down, but your heart rate is still showing this pattern that you're engaging in content and that your fight or flight might be popping in when you see some sort of exciting video on the internet. So it's kind of using all of those different patterns, comparing them to each other and saying, oh, we're pretty sure Tom is asleep. I actually love how when I wake up in the morning and sync my ring to my app, one of the things that it gives me, in addition to, of course, how I slept last night was uh, really tailored feedback for how I should maybe go at my day. So if I didn't sleep well, it gives me a card that says, okay, here's how you should rest today or, or take it easy. Or conversely, if I did sleep well and my body's you know, really primed to kind of take on that strain. Here are some things that I can do to, to tackle that. So it really does, the app really feels like this tailored experience to each user. Awesome, I think the number one feedback that we hear from people is the two messages that like really surprise them are how they see their night of sleep after a drink. So <laughs> how much their sleep was impacted by that. And the other is late meal timing. Mm. So or is one of the only apps that shows you that trace that we talked about. So the journey of your heart throughout the night. And a lot of people are used to looking at one number, you know, was my heart rate high or low? But if you eat pretty late, if it's a dessert or a meal, you see how much more elevated your heart rate is at the beginning of the night and how long it takes your heart to recover. So it's a really good example of a message that people probably haven't considered um, until they see that little personalized reminder in the morning that's like, hey, did you eat late last night? And if so, maybe take a look at your data and see if you feel better or worse. <laughs> I'm really, really glad you said that. I may or may not have had a very large cookie before bed last night. My kids and I, we, we put dough in like these little cast iron pans and we pop them in the oven. I mean, it was amazing, but uh, it certainly impacted my quality of sleep. It was worth it is, is what I'm saying. That's what we want people to do though. You know, it's not, a, it's not a tool to say like, you know, Tom, those cookies have to go. It's like, now you have the decision to make where maybe that's not an every night kind of thing. Although I think we could all use that this year. Um, but maybe it's calculated where, you know what, I slept well this week. How about cookie night, you know, on, on Thursday, because let's go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? So I guess the final question I have for you, if we look at the last 10 years of sleep tracking, for example, very few people would have probably anticipated or expected that you could have the quality of sleep tracker that we do just on our finger. So I wanna look forward maybe five to 10 years. What are the next steps that you see for sleep trackers and sleep tracking devices? I would say that there's a huge movement for these longer term health tools. So traditionally, if you went into a sleep lab, the only reason you were there in the first place is you had an acute condition that you were trying to diagnose. And you probably only went into the lab for two nights of sleep. Mm. And all of us know two nights of sleep, you can pick any two random nights that I slept. It probably doesn't actually represent my overall health. 
So the idea is that people are really going to be empowered with a lot more data. So that's probably the most exciting thing. Um, but I think you know, it goes well beyond sleep and it's where people are going to start learning about what sleep unlocks for them. So a great example would be a lot of people aren't talking right now about how sleep impacts fertility. Mm-hmm. And so we'd love to see sleep trackers getting purchased, not just because you you know want to get better sleep and you've been tossing and turning, but because you have another goal that you're interested in accomplishing. And we're able to educate the market and say, hey, did you even know that good sleep could unlock X, Y, Z for you, maybe weight loss goals, fertility, again, some of these other conditions, um, and see people feeling more empowered to sleep better because they want to do something else with their health. Well, Caroline, I really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Uh, It seems like there's a lot of cool things on the horizon for just sleep tracking in general, and maybe Aura specifically. So I look forward to Aura 4.0. Me too. And I hope that it embodies more of the culture that we at least talk about internally, which is, it's not weird if it works. Like, it's great to take all the internet advice that you can possibly see and definitely start with what the experts are saying. But we'd like to see more people saying, hey, by the way, when I go to bed with wet socks on, I get the best sleep of my life. It works for me. I'm not knocking it. You know, maybe it will work for you. And so hopefully there'll be more of a culture of sharing tips and saying, this is specifically what worked for me and I felt empowered to experiment in the first place. You know, maybe chocolate chip skillet cookie night actually brings you so much joy that you get the best night of sleep and you're able to share that as a hack for other people. (laughs) I only wish that was the case.